into the midst of the dark winter of this pandemic as cases, hospitalizations, and deaths spike at record levels, there is real pain overwhelming the real economy. We didn't get into all this overnight. We won't get out of it overnight. And we can't do it as a separated and divided nation. The only way we can do it is to come together there is Joe Biden laying out his COVID relief plan. And as he prepares to take office, our brand new poll with The Washington Post shows that more than two thirds of Americans approve of how Biden has handled the presidential transition. Rachel Scott will be covering the Biden administration from the White House. And Rachel, we can expect the blizzard of action from President Biden right after he takes the oath on Wednesday. And Georgia will be the first action that Joe Biden takes as president of the United States. Much of this is going to be focused on undoing what President Trump did during his administration. Biden does plan on rejoining the Paris Climate Accord. He plans on reversing that travel ban on predominantly Muslim countries and making it mandatory to wear a face mask on federal property. He can't do that on his own, but much of his agenda is going to require Congress. And that Senate impeachment trial for President Trump could start as soon as next week. If it does happen during his first 100 days in office, there is no doubting this will pose a significant challenge for the president-elect. He has already unveiled a massive COVID relief package that he wants Congress to get through. He has a long list of cabinet secretaries that will need, be, need to be confirmed by the Senate. He is expecting Congress to multitask, even suggesting that they can split the day. But George, this is just going to be an inauguration that we have never seen before. Just take a look at the security perimeter behind me, George. It is something. Okay, Rachel Scott, thanks very much. Let's bring in Kate Bedingfield, who's going to be the communications director in the Biden White House. Kate, thanks for joining us this morning. Give us more of a flavor of what to expect on Wednesday in terms of action from President Biden. Yes. So President-elect Biden, then President Biden, is going to come into office and take decisive steps to roll back some of the most egregious uh, moves of the Trump uh, administration. And he's going to take steps to move us forward. Across the course of the first week and a half in office, you're going to see him move on promises that he made on the campaign trail to uh, to ensure that we are focused on workers. You'll see him make good on his Buy American promise. Uh, you're going to see him make good on promises to move us to toward a more just and racially equitable society. You're going to see him make movement on racial equity. Uh, and you're going to see him make movement on climate, on jobs. Uh, so over the course of the first week and a half, he's going to do uh, everything that he can within his power uh, to move us forward. But then, uh, you know, as your correspondent just said, that's only one piece of the agenda. The second piece of the agenda uh, will be working with Congress. You saw President-elect Biden roll out the American Rescue Plan on uh, Thursday night. This is a plan to get desperately needed direct relief to people who've been hardest hit by this crisis all over the country. And it's an effort to fund a coordinated federal vaccine effort. It's an effort to get shots into American arms to ensure that we can once and for all finally get this virus under control and get our economy back on track. You're already hearing some Democrats and many Republicans saying it's just too expensive. There's been bipartisan support for all of these pieces. Um, that's, I would really point that out. I mean, if you look at the big core planks of this plan, for example, Senator Rubio supports uh, direct relief checks. Senator Romney supports expanding the child tax credit. I mean, there is bipartisan support for the big planks of this plan. And I would also note that the plan came about as a result of consultation with bipartisan governors and mayors from all across the country. The president-elect spoke with Republican governors, with Republican mayors, to hear what they need, what's going on with their constituents, what the most dire and important needs are um, uh, for their constituents. And so this plan reflects the urgent needs, the things that people need right now. I mean, you know, we've got millions of Americans unemployed. We've got thousands of Americans dying from the virus every day. There's no question we are in a state of emergency here. And this plan is designed to get the relief that people need uh, to them right away. And uh, President-elect Biden looks forward to working with Congress uh, to get bipartisan support for this bill and get it done as quickly as possible. First things first, the inaugural address that comes on Wednesday. You just heard Congressman Meyer say it's time for an open, honest, and transparent discussion from President, Bi from President Biden. He says rejecting the politics of deception. What can Americans expect to hear on Wednesday? What is the major goal of this address? So I think what you'll hear from President-elect Biden on Wednesday will be a reflection of a lot of what you heard from him on the campaign trail, which is that 
Uh, he believes we can bring this country together. He believes that we have to bring this country together, that uh, a unified America uh, is the only way that we're going to be able to tackle the massive crises that, that we're grappling with. Um, I won't go too much farther in terms of, of uh, previewing this, the speech, because I'll let the president-elect uh, speak to it on Wednesday. But I think you can expect that this will be a moment where uh, President-elect Biden will really work to try to turn the page on the divisiveness and the hatred of the last four years and really lay out a positive, optimistic vision for the country and, and lay, out a way, uh, lay out a path forward that um, really calls on all of us to work together. I think that's what Americans all across the country want. They want a government that, once again, is focused on doing the right thing by them uh, and, and helping them in their day-to-day -day lives. And so you're going to hear President-elect Biden really lay out a vision um, to get us to a place where we can work together, uh, because that's what Americans want. That's what they voted for in this election. 81 million Americans voted for President-elect Biden, uh, in part because he was laying out a vision for this country um, uh, that gets us to a place where we can work together. So you'll hear a lot of that from him uh, on the 20th. He'll be delivering that message across an empty mall there, the Capitol Mall. The, the entire U.S. Capitol has become an armed camp right now. You've had to cancel certain parts of the inauguration, including the train ride into Washington, D.C., including some rehearsals. Are you certain that the ceremony is going to take place on the west front of the Capitol as planned? Well, that is certainly our plan. Um, I think that will send an incredibly important visual uh, image to the world about the resilience of American democracy. Um, and so our plan and our expectation is that uh, President-elect Biden will put his hand on the Bible with his family outside on the west side of the Capitol on the 20th. Um, look, there is no question, though, of course, we are in a volatile time. I think, you know, unfortunately, you only have to look at the chatter on social media to see um, that we are in a volatile time. And so uh, we are making preparations. Uh, we'll begin meeting tomorrow, uh, daily meetings with the outgoing uh, leadership in national security and law enforcement um, to ensure that we're preparing for any scenario that, that should arise after noon on January the 20th. So we're working to ensure that we'll be prepared. Um, but uh, we have uh, full faith in the United States Secret Service and their partners who've been working for over a year on uh, the planning to ensure that this event is safe. So um, we're very much looking forward to President-elect Biden putting his hand on the Bible at noon on the 20th. Has the President-elect weighed in with Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer on when the Senate trial of President Trump should start and how long it should go? Well, obviously, ultimately, the, uh, the mechanics and the logistics of, of uh, the pace of the trial and, and how it should play out is up to congressional leadership. Um, you know, I think the president-elect has spoken publicly about uh, his view here, which is that he hopes that the Congress will be able to uh, to do its its, uh, its constitutional duty, to discharge its constitutional duty, while simultaneously being able to focus on the business of the American people. He hopes that they're going to be able to uh, immediately take up uh, this package, the American Rescue Package that he laid out at the end of last week, uh, and start to uh, move forward on getting that money that we need out the door in order to get uh, a comprehensive uh, vaccine distribution program set up. Uh, so his great hope is that they're going to be able to do that. And I think if you look, there's, you know, there's precedent for that. If you look at the previous impeachment trial, um, the Senate was able to move forward on floor business while also conducting the trial. So his hope, as, as he's, he's spoken uh, privately to congressional leadership, but also publicly about, uh, is that the Congress is going to be able to move forward um, on focusing on, on the virus and on the economy while simultaneously doing their constitutional duty. Kate Bedingfield, thanks very much for your time this morning. Thanks for having me, George. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.